Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to take a look at integrating Clojure with RabbitMQ. So let's get to it. So very briefly, what is RabbitMQ? Well, it's a queuing service which allows you to publish messages to it and read messages from it. So you actually don't publish messages directly to queues, you publish messages to exchanges with the routing key. And depending on what the exchange is or the type of the exchange and what routing key you send it, the exchange will decide what queue or queues to send your message to. And then your client can read from one, like from all the queues. So let's just look at how we can set it up. So the first thing we need to do is actually get RabbitMQ running. So I'm gonna do that using Docker. So I'm just gonna create a Docker Compose file here. Docker Compose .yaml. And let's just set this up. So we're going to use version three. And I'm going to declare RabbitMQ as a service. So let's go services and RabbitMQ. And we need an image and we need to expose some ports. So let's just get the image quickly. So on Docker Hub, we're going to use this RabbitMQ image and I want to use this three management version. So we'll go rabbit mq and the version will be three management and the ports we want to expose are i don't know them offhand i think it yeah five six seven two cool so we'll expose five six seven two and we also want to expose one five six seven two now let's start that up so we just go docker compose up make sure docker is running otherwise nothing will happen Awesome, so once that's started, we can actually go to our browser and go to localhost port 15672. And yeah, we can log into our RabbitMQ. If you ask for a username and password, the default is guest and the password is guest. So we don't have any queues. We have some exchanges, but we'll create our own exchange. We don't have any channels and we don't have any connections. So let's get started creating our Clojure project. So I'm just gonna create a new depths.edn file, make a map, and we'll pass through a pause of just source. And now we need some dependencies. So the first dependency is this RabbitMQ dependency. Well, this RabbitMQ client dependency. Long all, I don't actually know how to pronounce this. Let's put this in here, convert this to a depths dependency. So we just have to put this in a map and say Maven version. Then we also, well, I also want to use this other dependency, this tools.reader, and this will help us transmit this messages using EDN. Let's copy this dependency and we'll put it here. Let's create our core.clj inside of a source directory. Save this. And now let's start up a REPL. So once the REPL started, I want to go back to the this RabbitMQ library and I want to copy all these dependencies here. So I'm just going to copy this whole require statement and paste it here. Then evaluate this. Cool, and now we're good to go. So the first thing I want to do is let's create a queue. So to do that, we need to establish a connection. So I'm just going to create a left binding here and get a connection and we'll just get that from rmq connect. So once we have a connection, I also want to make sure that I close it. So we'll use rmq close. That'll make sure that we close the connection once we're finished with it. Then we need a channel. So basically all the communication is done through channels and we get a channel from our connection. So you go lch and we'll open a channel with our connection. And we also make, need to make sure that we close this channel. So LCH, close. So essentially all we're doing now is we're opening a, a connection with RabbitMQ, we're creating a channel, then we're closing the channel, and then we're closing the connection. Before we close the connection, let's create a queue. So to do that, we'll use this queue namespace, our queue, and we want to declare a queue. This takes in a channel and also a queue name. I'm gonna declare this queue name at the top here so we just have access to it in all the functions that we're gonna run. So def queue name, and I'm just gonna call this test queue and evaluate that. And there's also like options that we can pass through here. So we can pass through the options of 
I think exclusive false. So that means this is not the only app that's able to use this cube. And let's say auto delete. And I'll set that to false. So if the queue is empty, it doesn't just auto delete. So we, we should be able to create a queue if we just hide this. And if we evaluate this, we get an error. And that's because we didn't pass the channel to our close function here. So let's evaluate this again. Cool. Everything looks good. Now if we go back to rabbit and go to queues, cool. We can see that we have our test queue, but there's no messages on the queue. So let's look at publishing a message to this queue. So you don't actually publish a message direct to a queue. You publish a message to an exchange. So I'm going to say publish message to exchange. And the exchange we're going to use is the default exchange. So I'm just going to define default exchange at the top. And that's just a blank string. And I actually want to show you something here. If you check in this documentation, you can see that they use this const metadata. And what that does is during compile time, this value won't get dereferenced. Instead, this value will be used directly, which speeds up the application a little bit. So we'll do that as well. So now we've defined our default exchange and let's publish. So I'm actually just going to copy this. Instead of declaring a queue, let's use this basic namespace. So I'll be um, publish and then we need a channel and we must pass through the exchange. So we're using the default exchange. Then we need to pass through a routing key. The routing key is how the exchange knows what queue or queues to publish our message to. So because we're using the default exchange, if the routing key matches the queue name, then that's where the message will go. So in this case, we're going to pass through the queue name as the routing key. And then we need a message. So we can just for now say hello. And let's do that. Cool. We get null back. But if we go to rabbit, we should be able to see we have a message in our queue. And if we click here and we go to get messages, get messages, we'll see that cool. We have our message there. Now let's look at consuming that message. Cool. So to consume a message from the queue, we're going to use this consumers namespace. So I'm just going to copy this here, get rid of publish and use LC to subscribe to a, to a queue. Then we need to pass through the channel, the name of the queue. Then we need a message handler. So this is when we pull down the message, the function that gets called. We don't have this yet. We'll just create it. And then we can also pass through some options here. So auto acknowledge or auto delete, let's say auto acknowledge and then say true. So when we pull this message, um, it'll automatically be acknowledged and won't be pulled by another subscriber. So let's just create this message handler now. So I'm going to define a function here called message handler and a message handler receives a channel metadata for the message and also the payload. So one thing I'm going to do is create a let binding here. I'm going to make a variable called past payload because the payload we receive is going to be encoded. So to decode it, we need to create a new string. So we go to string new payload and then we need to pass through the encoding, which is UTF eight. And then we can print line payload received and we can print the payload and let's spell print line properly and let's print out the pass payload. Cool, evaluate this and let's run this now. Cool, and if we open up our terminal, we should see that message. And we don't see it, I think, because we acknowledged it here. So if the queue is empty, so let's publish to that queue. Hello, and if we run this again, cool. Payload received, hello. Cool. So that's basically how we can use rabbit and queue by just passing text to rabbit and queue and then consuming that queue. Now let's look at creating our own exchange. So I'm going to create a new exchange here. And here I want to use the direct exchange. So I'm just going to call this direct exchange. And I'm going to say my direct exchange and evaluate this. So the way the direct exchange works is that if your routing key matches the binding key, for the queue, then your message will be passed to that queue. Now let's look at how to make the exchange. So here, create a direct exchange. And I'm just going to copy this here. 
And I'm gonna get rid of this line here. I'm gonna need the exchange namespace. So we go langol.exchange as Ali. Evaluate this and let's use it here. So Ali needed to declare because we're creating an exchange. Then we need to pass through our channel and the name of the exchange. So that's gonna be this direct exchange and this exchange type. So the exchange type here, just pass through a string and it's gonna be direct. So if we evaluate this, we can go back to RabbitMQ, go to exchanges, and we'll see that we've created our exchange. But now we need to bind that exchange to a queue. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna do it in the same function here. I'm gonna need this queue namespace. So I'm gonna go LQ and we'll say bind, and then this takes in the channel again. Then it takes the name of the queue we wanna to bind to. So we'll just use queue name. Then the exchange we wanna use, that's gonna be this direct exchange. Then we need to pass it a routing key. So this routing key is gonna be direct root. So if we rerun this, now if we go and click on my direct exchange, we can click on bindings and then you can see that it's bound to test queue with the routing key of direct root. So now let's send a message using this routing key. So let's copy this here, this publish message to exchange and I'm gonna just say publish message to direct exchange. So here we're not gonna use a default exchange, we're gonna use our direct exchange. And here we pass through our routing key. It's not gonna be the queue name anymore. It's gonna be this, it's gonna be direct root. And we're gonna say hello from direct. And if we evaluate this, we should be able to go back to our queue Take a click on test queue, get message, and here's our payload. Hello from direct. So that all worked good. I also want to show you that if we ran this with a binding key that didn't exist, nothing would happen. If we got messages, it's not there. Nothing goes to the queue. Same thing here. If we, it didn't pass a queue name, but passed through something random, go here, just the message just gets lost. So. You just lose it. Cool. So the last exchange type I want to show you is the topic exchange. So I'm going to create a new exchange here called topic exchange. And then I'm going to call it my topic exchange. Evaluate this. I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to say create a topic exchange. So the way the topic exchange works is that we only need to partially match the routing key. So let's create a topic exchange. So we're going to declare a new exchange and this is going to be our topic exchange and then we pass through the exchange type of topic here the routing key will be let's say topic dot anything so as long as we have topic dot in our routing key the the message will be sent to queues that are bound to this exchange and then we just need to change this this binding to topic exchange if we evaluate this then we can go back to our exchanges, click on my topic exchange, and then we see that it's bound to test queue with the routing key of topic.anything. So now let's publish a message to the topic exchange. So I'm just gonna copy this here, copy this comment. So here as the routing key, I'm gonna say topic.anything, because it doesn't matter what this is. And we're gonna be using the topic exchange and I'm gonna say hello from topic. Evaluate this. And if we go back to queues, test queue, cool. Then I actually just wanna get all the messages. Hello from direct and then hello from topic. Cool. So that's all working. So now I wanna show how we can send through EDN instead of just using strings because EDN is gonna be a lot more handy than passing string payloads. So I'm just gonna clean this queue out and then I'm gonna purge, purge messages. Cool, so now we shouldn't have any messages in the queue. The queue is empty. Let's use that EDN library. So I'm gonna go here to the top and I'm gonna import closure.tools.reader.edn as EDN. And here for the messages, I'm gonna actually just make a message variable and it's gonna be, let's say, data, this 
is my data from direct. And we'll pass that through here. And here from topic, we'll do something similar. We'll go message data. This is my data from topic. And we'll pass it right here. And then I want to do the same thing for this message here. I want to create a message data. And this is my data from default. Pass through the message here. So we won't be able to just send through this because RabbitMQ won't know what this is. It needs a string. So we can make this a string by, if I'm just going over all of them, I'm going to wrap these in a print string. So what print string will do is if I just show you this here and we run print string, it'll just return this map as a string. Cool. So now what we can do is we can just publish this message. I'm just going to publish this one using the default exchange. Now, if we go get messages, we'll see that we have that map here. So now if we want to read this value as a map, we just need to actually import this at the top. Then we can go here and we can wrap this in EDN read string. And here with the pass payload, I'm just going to grab the data from this payload. Evaluate this. And now I think we can run this. Cool. And this is data from default. So what I also want to show you is if we don't close this channel and we don't close this connection, let's also just put this in a function. I'm going to say start consumer. And then we can put this inside of it. Oh, and let's just <laughs> put define here, save this, evaluate this. Now, if we start consumer, this thing will just carry on running. Cool. So we see it's running here. And now if we just clear this here. If I publish messages to the queue, we can see that this consumer is just going to get them. So we can. And that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I try to make this as informative as possible in as short as time as possible. I hope I did that. If I did, please give it a like. Cheers. Bye. Uncle Gear.